Surrounded by family and friends this afternoon during his lunch break, Leonardo Rapatis officially filed his candidacy, seeking a second term as the island's attorney general. I'm excited to run again because I, there, uh, even though we've done a lot of things over the last four years and we have done quite a bit, um, we still have a lot more to do. The island's third elected AG says some of that unfinished business includes working more with the schools and, of course, the victims of crimes. We've had one of the, the, the hardest and strongest uh, last couple of years on trials. We're getting a lot of the criminals put away. We still have a number of people out there who still want to, um, you know, just not obey the, the norms of society. And while he's seen the success of several convictions, Rapata says he continues to face challenges from funding and sometimes not seeing eye to eye with lawmakers and the administration. We've both had our disagreements, but I think that's the nature of the, the position of being attorney general is, is if there's disagreement, then so be it. Uh, my position is charged with following the law. And if I see that the law is not being followed either by the legislature or by, by the administration, that, uh, that's something that I need to t let them know in strongest terms. But it doesn't mean he cannot work with them. In fact, Rapata says a lot of his success comes from collaborating with lawmakers on valuable legislation, such as the Family Violence Registry and the Child Abuse Task Force. Rapatis, meanwhile, is the only candidate so far to pick up a packet and officially file for the nonpartisan race. According to the Guam Code annotated, the office of the Attorney General will be on the ballot in the primary election, even if he's the only one running. The top two vote-getters will then move on to the general election. But what about other races that go unchallenged in the primary? Based on the new reform law, the, uh, there will still be a need for the primary election. GEC Executive Director Maria Pangolina says in the old law, there was a section in the code that said primary elections can be canceled when there is no contest, for instance, in the gubernatorial or senatorial race. The new law is absent of cancellation of the primary. The whole section on cancellation was deleted in the new law. She says after the election reform law went into effect in 2012, her staff reviewed the law and were caught by surprise, noting the differences, which her legal counsel further confirmed. The commission will be saving money if we don't have a primary. Um, on the other hand, you know, there, there may be an advantage to the primary in that uh, we go through it and with, especially with the machines, we can go through it and, and fix the hiccups before the big general election. She estimates the cost for the primary election to be around $350,000, inclusive of the increased stipends for precinct officials. The deadline, meanwhile, to file your candidacy with the GEC is on July 1st. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Ken Quintaniza.